We knew for a long time when I left the government we would move out here. Robert Gates doesn't pull any punches about why he now lives in a town outside Seattle. Why'd you pick this of all the places you could settle? Well, other than the fact that it's the uh, farthest place in the continental United States from Washington, D.C. That's a pretty good <laughs> reason. But it wasn't all that long ago that he was Secretary of Defense. So help me God, so help me God. Congratulations. The first person in history to hold the job under two presidents from two different parties. I want to thank publicly Bob Gates. And working for both George W. Bush and Barack Obama, Gates won bipartisan praise for his managerial skills, integrity, and calm demeanor. Yet he says in private he was often seething. So why was I so angry all the time? Why did I want to leave all the time? And I write, it's just because getting anything done in Washington was so damnably hard. The White House today on the defensive after excerpts were released. And after a week filled with Defense leaks. Secretary. A new memoir offers a devastating critique of President Obama. There is a lot in the book that could be very damaging. Excerpts. Uh, almost unheard of. And pundits holding forth. To engage in this level of betrayal. It's clear that duty, Gates's new memoir, has caused a sensation and will likely go down in history as one of the most candid assessments ever written by a former cabinet official. Take his view of Congress. You say uncivil, incompetent in fulfilling basic constitutional responsibilities, parochial, hypocritical, egotistical, too often putting self and re-election before country. This was my view of the majority of the U.S. Congress. Yeah, I thought about I thought about that sentence a lot and, uh, and whether it was too strong, and I decided at the end of the day that that's what I believe. Gates, now 70, is a former CIA director who was serving as head of Texas A&M University when President Bush asked him to replace Donald Rumsfeld as Secretary of Defense in November of 2006. We're here to congratulate Bob Gates on becoming our nation's 22nd Secretary of the Defense. By then, the president, he says, had concluded that things were going badly in Iraq, and Gates decided Congress needed to hear the truth. Mr. Gates, uh, do you believe that we are currently winning in Iraq? No, sir. Gates credits President Bush with turning the U.S. effort around by ordering a surge of some 30,000 personnel. An idea, Gates says, even he didn't support at first. He had some other minor disagreements with Mr. Bush, but he was more likely to clash with Vice President Dick Cheney, who did seem to understand that his influence with Bush had waned. And actually, he was pretty good-humored about it. He would occasionally say, look, I know I'm alone on this, uh, but here's what I think. This was given to me by General Petraeus. Gates's study is filled with military MRAP. mementos. Yeah. This yeah. is a piece of an MRAP that was attacked. MRAPs, or mine-resistant, ambush-protected vehicles, are credited with saving countless lives and limbs in Iraq and Afghanistan. But Gates had to fight his own war within the Pentagon to get the vehicles produced. It's bureaucratic inertia. It's an unwillingness to spend money on a war that everybody expected to be over soon. But the key for me was that, it, that protecting these young men and women was the foremost. Gates became known as the soldier's secretary, and yet... From everything you wrote, it doesn't sound like you really enjoyed being secretary of defense. I, I didn't enjoy it. There is nothing enjoyable about a job where you put men and women in harm's way for their country's sake. Nothing. I've asked Secretary Robert Gates to continue as Secretary of Defense, and I'm pleased... Still in 2008, when ago, newly elected President Obama asked Gates, a Republican, to stay on, his answer was an unequivocal yes. I felt it was my duty to those troops. And that didn't end with the Bush administration. Forever! And one of the first orders of business for President Obama was turning things around in Afghanistan. 
ultimately ordering in some 50,000 additional troops. I do not make this decision lightly. Gates praises Mr. Obama for facing down political opposition from his own party, yet he also offers some tough criticism of the president, suggesting that at times he was skeptical of his own strategy in Afghanistan. You say about President Obama that as much as you admired him on so many levels, he never really had a passion for pursuing the war in Afghanistan, and that kind of bothered you. It's one thing to tell the troops that you support them. It's another to, to work at making them believe that you believe, as president, that their sacrifice is worth it, that the cause is just, that what they are doing is important for the country, and that they must succeed. President Bush did that with the troops uh, when I was secretary. I did not see President Obama do that. And I said, and I, as I write in the book, it was this absence of passion, this absence of a conviction of the importance of success that, that disturbed me. What's more, he's harshly critical of some of the president's staffers. You called the national security staff under President Obama the most micromanaging and controlling since Richard Nixon and Henry Kissinger. Did you ever tell the president about it directly? No, and I, I acknowledge this in the book. That Should you have, do you think? I, I, well, first of all, things don't happen that way if the president doesn't want them to happen that way. Do you have a sense that's changed, or do you think they're still running things I from the White House? I actually think it's gotten worse. <laughs> And then there were his disagreements with the number two man in Washington. You are not very flattering to Vice President Biden in this book. Actually, I think I am in some areas uh, uh, complimentary of him. But where I had a particular problem with the Vice President was in his encouragement of suspicion of the military and the senior military with the President. You can't trust these guys. They're going to try and jam you. They're going to try and box you in, and so on. And that, that did disturb me a lot. The outcry over Gates's criticism of Biden led to that White House solidarity photo op of the president and vice president this past week. Actually, Gates says he did occasionally see eye to eye with Biden. One time when I agreed with him on something, uh, often, Admiral Mullen, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, and I would ride back to the Pentagon together from the White House. And M Mullen turned to me at one point. He said, you know that you agreed with the vice president this morning. <laughs> I said, yeah, that's why I'm rethinking my position. As for Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, Gates says he was dismayed when he heard her tell President Obama that her opposition to the 2007 troop surge in Iraq had been political because she was facing him during the primary season. But Gates also has high praise for Clinton, saying she became one of his closest allies in the administration. The thing that I liked best about Secretary Clinton, uh, other than the fact she has a great sense of humor, was she's very tough-minded. Do you think she'd make a good president? Um, actually, I think she would. And how about Vice President Biden? There's some talk he might run. Well, I, I suppose to be even-handed, I would have to say I suppose he would. <laughs> Thank you. Gates says he finally left the Secretary of Defense job in 2011. Thanks for your service. In large part because he felt that his concern for any, safety uh, of American uh, troops might be clouding his judgment, leading him, for example, to oppose instituting a no-fly zone over Libya during the waning days of Muammar Gaddafi's regime. I became very emotionally caught up with the troops. And it got to the point where I couldn't speak to them or about them without choking up. And that was another reason why I thought, it's time to go. This is a great room. And yeah. so he went. This, uh, this is where I wrote the book. And soon began working on his book, which has created such turmoil in Washington since we first spoke with him that the secretary 
wearing a neck brace from a recent fall, agreed to talk with us again just a few nights ago. A lot of questions are being raised about whether it was proper in the first place for a Secretary of Defense to write anything negative about a sitting president, especially on matters, on policy matters that are still ongoing. Here I think you have to look at the entirety of the book and, and the fact that it deals with getting into wars, getting out of wars, and frankly it seemed to me that with the experience of, uh, and perspective of uh, working for eight presidents uh, and, and having been secretary for four and a half years, uh, I didn't think that waiting until 2017 to weigh in on these issues uh, and in a comprehensive uh, uh, and thoughtful way uh, made any sense. I think what people are troubled by is that you criticize President Obama on actions, particularly on his commitment to the war in Afghanistan while it's still going on. And people are saying, look, that's just not right. I make very explicit in the book that I agreed with all of the president's decisions uh, on Afghanistan, the ones that he made in 2009 and, and subsequently. My one concern, as I describe in the book, and to be honest about it, was that over the course of 2010 and early 2011, the president began to have his own reservations about whether it would all work. And I think that's not an unfair thing to say. In your book, you say that one of your favorite adages is, never miss a good chance to shut up. And I wonder if you think maybe you violated your own advice here. Um, and do you regret anything that you've written? No, I don't. I, I think that it's an honest account. Look, people gave me uh, a lot of credit when I was in office of being um, blunt, and candid about what I felt about things. I could hardly be any less uh, in, in writing a book. But Gates says he understands that people will take what they want to take from his book. In a way, the way people are looking at the book reflects the polarization of our political process at this point. A lot of people, not everybody, is going to look at this book in terms of how does it advance um, my particular political agenda, or how does it damage my political agenda? And my objective was to stand back and try and provide a nonpartisan look at the kind of issues that have riven our country and riven our government uh, for the last number of years. These are my cabinet chairs from the two administrations. These days, instead of cabinet. moving in the highest reaches of government, Gates now works as a private consultant and savors the time he can spend with Becky, his wife of 47 years, and their two grown-up children. Could you ever imagine a time when you would go back and take a big government job? No. Very large, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I could write the book I did. <laughs> Still looking back, are you glad that you took the job of Secretary of Defense and glad that you stayed? It was the greatest honor of my life, bar none.